Metals have been indispensable to our way of life for thousands of years. Australia dug up well over 400 million tonnes of ores last year alone. Copper and nickel could be nearing peak production. So we could have already extracted more than what's left in the earth. And while there may be decades of gold, iron ore and other metals left, the costs of extraction could soar. From wind turbines to consumer goods craving metals, some experts focusing on peak metal production say Australia faces a major challenge. From cheaper and easier to more complex and difficult uh, processing. As production peaks and then declines, what you're getting out, it's not that it's not there, it's just harder to extract, higher social and environmental costs and it becomes uneconomic. So extracting those remoter ores gets increasingly expensive. Eventually we're going to have to start mining it and it's going to be more energy intensive, more water intensive, therefore more greenhouse emissions intensive. Uh, at the same time as we're trying to make things more energy efficient, we're trying to reduce our water consumption uh, and you know, deal with issues such as climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions. But policymakers are now joining academics in discussing peak metals. At this Peak Minerals Forum in Sydney, they've all turned up to discuss how we can avoid digging ourselves any deeper. But much government spending is still aimed at helping mining companies exploit ever thinner ores with pricey new technologies turned to. The overriding goal about assisting the industry to bring new um, resources on stream will certainly contribute to delaying the onset of peak minerals. But the emissions and water consumption of mining are huge, and Australia is a long way from the more sustainable approach that will be needed in the coming years. They are incremental improvements that are going to be made, and they won't be enough to see us towards the targets that we need to meet. But I think we need to insert it into a broader debate about metals management as part of sustainable production and consumption and what is the role for the mining industry and it's about connecting those other players, the users, the recyclers and uh, that's, that's difficult but necessary. Yet Australia lags behind in metals recycling and e-waste is a case in point. Phones and computers contain near-peak metals like copper, nickel and silver plus rare elements like tantalum. But only around 7% of computers get recycled, while up to 16 million old phones and batteries were last year lying around unused. Sims e-recycling says corporations bring in 60% of the e-waste, and councils, lacking government support, make up the rest. I think Australia is pretty much is in the minority in terms of the OECD countries, which does not have any legislation to um, recycle electronic waste. But with metal waste piling up and the costs of mining rising, Gavin Mudd says it's not just about recycling. We have to think about the long-term view of how we, how we value metals and minerals uh, and how we consume and use them. For Damien Jerko, it all comes down to one point. What in tomorrow's more sustainable world will metals be really useful for? Are we using aluminium for wrapping up our lunch in the morning or for constructing wind turbines. So of all countries, Australia needs to broaden its discussion of metals use. If we don't, we could be facing the environmental and financial consequences when it's too late. Bill Code, World News Australia.